O. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever in- had an encounter with police? Uh, when you're having your, one of your mental health episodes. Oh, Lord, have I? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know the answer the to this The police question. and I, uh, in several regions of Ontario, several. are quite quite fond of one another, oh uh, if, you, if you will. Um, I've been picked up, thrown <laughs> around, slapped down. Just like a country song. No, I mean, it, it wasn't as bad <laughs> as... It wasn't as bad as all of that. Um, I have... I have had experience, which I will share with you more on the show, but it, it, it was interesting. It was an interesting experience. I could recall a couple. <laughs> you can recall a couple. We're going to recall a couple of those on, on this episode, but, you know, the police are uh, they're the police, so. <laughs> I got that dish. Hey y'all, it's Onika. And it's your girl B. And you are dishing with Dainty Dish. How are you doing today, B? Girl, it is hot as Hades. Outside. Hot as Hades. I am like, mm -mm, I'm not going to expose myself, but you know what it do, how hot it is. I know what you did. I know what you had to do, but when we start filming, you can't do that shit. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. You're going to just deal with the heat. I'm okay. I'm dealing. Deal with the heat. I'm scratching and surviving. Good times. That is just our thing. That's our thing. I'm playing right now. Um, How about you? How you been? Uh, I've been I've been good. I've get? been good. You know, um, when is this airing? Oh, it's airing on Wednesday. That's if I can get it out in time. Uh, to my audience, I'm I'm so sorry. I've been really lackadaisic. COVID's got me like just so effed up sometimes that I don't get everybody, this out everybody. on a Wednesday always or do a description. I've been lazy. I've been really foul to my uh, listening audience, and I'm sorry. I will correct myself, and I will do better because there's always room up. for improvement. Yeah, we'll pick it up. We'll get it. We'll get it. But other than that, I'm doing well. I'll be on two days away from going on a trip with the fam uh, to the cottage. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I, I, the kids, kids can't. It's it's too much. No, uh, too much. The kids, too much. the kids are too much. The kids are too much. The kids are too much. But um, well, say it five more times. Why don't you? The kids are too much. The kids are too much. The kids are too much. Uh, it's like a chant. It's like my new chant. The kids are too much. Uh, yeah. Uh, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about policing, policing. and mental health. Yes. Um. So I'm gonna do a Dave Chappelle shtick. Oh my goodness, your face. Go the Dave Chappelle, he, I've met, listening. you know I've met, yep. he's listening, you know he's listening to this podcast because we've met and we were friends and um, we smoked <laughs> a joint together and it was amazing. So um, Dave, I know you're listening and if you're not, you will be soon. So Your new stand up? Yeah. Amazing. I haven't seen it yet. What? Amazing. What? Where is this new stand up if not on Netflix? It is on IGTV on his on his Instagram. It's on YouTube, I believe. People have said, but I saw it on IG, and it was amazing. Balls, way to touch on the is shoes, my my good gentleman, sir. Oh my gosh, I really need to see you this. I'm grace. so behind. You did it with grace. I gotta watch this after you guys leave. I'm so I'll For let sure. you pull it up on my cell phone. I will. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk about the OJ Simpson thing when he's like the first time I met OJ. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The second time I met OJ. So the first time I got stopped by the cops. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I got accosted by the police. Uh, I can't remember the year, but it was episode number two, I Picture think. It. it was episode number two. Uh, and the police, I actually, Julian has told the story of how this went down that day. Um, but on past episodes where he got involved and I had knives and this is the thing that, this is the thing that like, I thank God every day. I know God looks after children and fools and crazy people because I had knives in the house. I told the police that I had a knife, um, and to come and get me because they wouldn't let me leave. So then police fire and ambulance came. And the police basically escorted. It was a, it wasn't a bad experience. Like 
for for Papa Dainty, it was terrible because there were police, like white man police in his house. Like he he did not like that ta ta tall ta ta tall. So you know he basically was like, get out of my house, whatever. And I'm like calmly picking up clothes to take to the hospital, and the police are like standing at my door because it's this is what a wellness call is. Like I called them on myself, but they had to come and escort me to the hospital where they proceeded to handcuff me and lock me in a room, you know, for mm -hmm. like a couple of hours until they could hand me off to then the, the ER in the hospital for them to do their bidding with me. So that was the first time that was the first I ever time. messed with the cops. But I'll tell you more about that later. I'm going to do a full Dave Chappelle on this one. You guys think I'm joking. I'm not because uh, there was a couple instances. But mm. with that said... I think it's time for Newsflash. So. What do you have for me today? These are all fairly recent. Mm. Um, I think with the climate we find in the culture that we're in um, today, uh, the police are under a microscope now. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not getting away with the same BS that they used to be able to get away with. Rightfully so. So um, Toronto's Cam 8 says police should not be first responders um, to mental health calls. Mm. So the Toronto uh, Centre for Addiction and Mental Health uh, say police officers should not be the first responders uh, to the scene to a mental health crisis or uh, if a person is in mental distress. Um, someone was quoted to say, I think just Cam H in general, their rep was quoted to say, recent events have exposed the tragic outcomes that can occur when people with mental illness experience a crisis in a community and are not able to get care, the care that they need. Mm -hmm. um, and this is coming after multiple incidences involving police uh, and a person in mental distress that have resulted in fatality. Which recently was... Um Oh my goodness! I want to say her name correctly, so we're probably gonna have to look it up. But the no, I have goes, it. Oh, you, you have, have it. Yes. You know, I'm okay. well researched so, on this topic. Yes, because so. I knew. Because the thing is, like, we're we're in. I I just want to repeat this once again. We're in a climate where police are killing black people. Police are killing people with mental health issues. Police are killing indigenous people. Police are killing people of color. Like, there's no checks and balances with police right now. And I've always wanted to do an episode on policing and mental health but my fear was that i'd come off as just this angry black woman who's like just fuck the police you know like whatever i said it mommy i know you didn't want me to i know you were gonna say it I was but like you know yeah point. like you yeah you can, you, can, you can repeat it later um yeah like i'm not trying to be in like i know their police have value in our community and they do save lives uh, uh probably more than they destroy um, but you know, they are being destructive right now and there, there's just no checks and balances and that's a, that's a huge problem. Not right now. They've been destructive, but their <laughs> policing culture saves their own kind skin. Let's be realistic. That's what that is. And they just, um, the article that I read gave some examples of police at their worst. Um, so June 20th, 62 year old man in the middle of a mental health crisis, uh, Ijaz Churdry, I'm I know I'm mispronouncing that. I'm sorry, sorry to the Churdry family. Okay. Um, called emergency help line at 5 p.m. Three hours later, uh, police stormed Churdry's house and fired multiple shots and killed him. Um, what? So yeah, like he called for help, and the police ended up killing him. Um, these are, we're going to talk more about wellness checks and that whole, there's like a big, it just seems like a huge scandal with it right now, really. Um, police watchdogs, the special investigation units are probing the death. Like, what are you going to find? Like, it's pretty straight as a, as a layman, as a person who has no investigative skills whatsoever. Mm, I like, watch enough criminal shows. You know, you watch enough criminal shows. I've been getting into the criminal one one. shows. Like... Trust so. me, like, it's not hard to, you know, get one plus one equals three. Like, it's not that difficult, mm. you it's know? So. <laughs> what could you do? Sometimes it's three. There's sometimes sometimes it's three, remainder. sometimes it's two. There could be a remainder. You never know. I'm just saying, like, it's hard for the public not to, to look at these situations and think to themselves, what the F is going on with the police? Mm -hmm. Like, what's going on with them? Where, what um, did, where were we turning a blind eye? Like, what? And how long has this been going on? Like, mm -hmm. how long has this been going on? So there was a 26-year-old black man, DeAndre Campbell, was fatally shot in April when he called again for help for himself. 
Uh, two officers tasered Campbell and fired multiple gunshots, killing him. Mm. He died on the scene, and apparently a knife was reportedly recovered by investigators. Um, was yeah. it really, though? What, was that's it the thing. Really? It's like that whole, like, thing in the 90s. Again, another Dave Chappelle reference. I don't know why I'm referencing Dave today, but I feel like it. Where it's like you just sprinkle some crack on them and <laughs> call it a call it a day. Call it a day. Like, would, wouldn't everyone notice, like, every single person with mental health issues has a knife? Like, they just go for the knife and they sh- point it at police and get themselves killed. Like, we're not in our right minds. I get that. But, and I know I went for the knife. Like, <laughs> as I told the story, I went, I went for the knife. But I didn't point it at no police officer to get myself shot. Like, it's just, everyone's going for the knife. I don't understand. Like, it seems very suspicious to me. Very suspicious. And then May 27th, you're talking about Regis. Mm-hmm. Krasinski Paquette fell off her balcony to her death. And then the Toronto police chief has the audacity to be like, oh, this is why we should wear body cams. Aren't you in charge of that? <laughs> like, who's, a, who's above you? Had who's her above you? laying there for hours, by the way, because I've seen the, the Instagram video that her brother posted, and he's like, my sister, they, they threw her off the balcony, and she's just been laying here with a sheet over her for hours, like three hours at least. So, like unnecessary yeah we don't know the story let's like you know no because the special investigation unit has to you know probe the death Mm -hmm. or whatever they're going to do with the death assume assuming might make an ass out of you and me but like it's a it's not it's not a a, a, pardon my pun it's not a leap like it's not a giant leap that the police might have done this we're not jumping to conclusions like we didn't didn't draw a mat and we didn't start and (laughs) say let's let's jump jump to to a a conclusion conclusion. office space good movie great movie (laughs) just referenced it the other day with candace Uh, and it was the same jumping to conclusion reference because i love that one um so cam h said that a new direction in crisis care should be uh implemented and that international models uh, where those in crisis are first met by mental health responders can be learned from. The center also says strategic investments in community mental health and intervention earlier to prevent the incidences um, from escalating should also be looked at. So like places like the UK, for instance, Mm -hmm. like they don't send, there's a story I read. I didn't even reference it in my notes, but I remember the story. um, A a, a social worker um, basically has moved from the UK to Toronto and he's just looking at the difference between how the UK system works and how the Toronto system works or the mm-hmm. Canadian system works. And the fact that in UK, they send first responders are people with mental health like backgrounds. Cri- background. They're, mm-hmm. they're professionals. And then they see if it needs to be... Um, if it needs to be Escalating escalated to, to, the, to the police. Mm-hmm. You know, even in that video, I don't know if you ended up watching it. If you didn't, it's cool. It, it happens. We have lives. I'm sorry. Um, so, I love you, though. Uh, there was an incident where I'm just referring. I didn't watch it again. Um, <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I didn't watch it. Again. I re- I'm referencing it from when I watched it the first time. Mm-hmm. So um, there was a case where a man had like an axe or something. Like this is in the UK. He had like an axe or he had some like kind of machete, mm-hmm. and they basically corralled him with their like um, their their shields into submission like there are ways to go about things you know mm-hmm. gun violence and shooting is not well, always the answer let's be honest the the police officers in the uk they don't have guns on top of that so I mean, no they don't they have bubbies <laughs> we need bubbies i think we need bubbies <laughs> just a bub just, just a bubby on the just a bubby <laughs> just a little bubby yeah they have bubbies so yeah, it's just like it's there's other ways. There's just other ways, and and we're gonna explore some of those other ways uh, in the podcast. We're just used to this gun culture. Let's be honest. And we are. Guns are power, and why not give the power of people guns? <sighs> why not, eh? Uh, is that a loaded question? <laughs> uh, another story. Advocates call for community-led mental health crisis intervention, uh, not the police. Uh, so. Deaths and injuries involving police. Deaths and injuries involving police um, during so-called wellness check, coupled with recent protests against police brutality, are generating scrutiny over the officers' response to people struggling with mental health challenges. 
Um, so that's a fact. Yeah. Uh, it, it was in the article, but now I know that's a that's a hard fact. There's no disguising it. There's no. There's no. Like no. it's saying, oh, maybe, possibly, no. Yeah. And then okay, and then they they go on to you know try to try to put a band aid on the um the they problem. Do, of course. There's many, many cities in in uh, the con- the country of Canada, many townships, um, but the ones they highlighted were the and they all have police departments is the point. Uh, and the ones they highlighted are the police departments in Halifax, Toronto, Hamilton, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, uh, Kelowna are among those that have partnered with healthcare providers to create mobile response units that pair officers with mental health professionals. This is called a crisis intervention team or a mobile crisis intervention team as they call it in Toronto. Um, why, aren't, why isn't everybody doing this? I was about to say because I haven't heard my city. Durham has one. Durham has one. I've been picked up by them. I won't say which which of the incidences were which because I don't want to get sued. But um, yeah, they have one. Mom has their business card probably still in her wallet, so just in case. (laughs) Just in case she she needs to make a phone call, calling a favor. Um, yeah, like police are just they're under funding mental health programming and they're just ill equipped to handle being what people call de facto social workers or de, vac- de facto mental health workers. They're being pushed towards the front line when they're sorely, sorely, sorely ill equipped. Hmm. Well, what do you expect when they only get little bits of training? Mm-hmm. And they also, and another huge problem is it's at police's discretion as to how much use of force um, is is given or done in any wellness check or any situation, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's still, it's up to them, like, what kind of force they use. Uh, Kanika sent me a video, which I think I sent to you, but I'm not sure. I, I thought I did, but if I did, I'll send it to you later, mm-hmm. uh, where a woman called for a wellness check her last name is wang i can't remember her first name uh and this female police officer proceeded to drag her in handcuffs down the hallway into the lobby it's like a video on the internet like drag her down the hallway on the carpet probably getting you know rug burn every rug burn and everything you know how bad rug burn is and so she's dragging her down the hallway and then into the into the lobby her handcuffs are her the handcuffs are behind her back so she's dragging her like basically from her handcuffs behind her back oh my God. all the way. So she's, you know, m- messing up muscles, doing all, you know, she, she and then she stepped on her head. <gasps> the girl went to raise her head and she put her foot on her head. And this is the uh, this is the RSCMP. I'm calling them out because in they like to put to me, police like to put a band aid, like I said, on everything saying, oh, yeah, this bad thing is happening. But look at what we're doing here. When you're not really doing enough, like the RCMP were saying that, um, what were they doing? Um, some kind of, I can't remember what it was. It'll come back to me in a minute, but it's just like, here's an incident where they're saying she was well within her right and good faith to do what she did. And they've seen the video. They've seen it. It's a Dave Chappelle reference again. They save, but they hurt. They They hurt. hurt. But they save. But they save. Yeah, like you know, you and you're gonna say she did. You're gonna stand by your officer, basically, that's, is what you're doing, because that that's the police culture. So how do you expect the the perpetrators to investigate other perpetrators? Like that's their culture. And you know what? Like we're not saying that this is one specific police department or whatever. We're we're putting you we're putting you under an umbrella. Okay. You put so many other people under umbrellas, the people with mental health issues, people of color, like you do it all the time. So we're putting you under an umbrella. Okay? We're and calling the spades a spade. Exactly. Let's call it spade a spade because the thing is, this is how you're portrayed even in the media. Hmm. Like, you, it's like how mental people years, in mental health are portrayed in the media as dangerous and violent and fearful and, you know, and out, like off their rockers. Off. And then there's the, yeah, there's the stuff in the media about police officers and i think people have seen it so often that like when they see real incidences of police behaving badly it's almost like they're watching a movie 
You know, they're not thinking like, yeah, they're desensitized because this is what they see on TV. This is how the police behave. Like, and the black community is desensitized too, eh? This is why the stuff is, is is continuously happening, and we're only now we're only now fed up because look how many names came before George Floyd and and everyone of recent. You know, like this is we're just sick and tired now. Yeah, we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Exactly. Exactly. So, um. So as I was saying, Toronto has the mobile crisis intervention team where they partner with mental health professionals, nurses specifically. Um, and then there's a trained, um, a trained uh, police officer as well that goes on these calls. But here's the, here's the, the caveat. So here's the, their mandate. I'm just going to read this because I think it's important for people to know, you know, this m- mobile crisis intervention team, what, who they are they and save. what they do and what they say they do. Um, <laughs> So they make um, immediate on-site clinical assessments for a person in crisis. Um, they attempt to destabilize and diffuse this, or stabilize, sorry, and diffuse the crisis. Um, assist in removing individuals from serious harm to themselves and others. Provide supportive counseling as needed. Um, they see about the appropriate mental health treatment through referrals and appropriate agencies um, or apprehension under the Mental Health Act. Uh, so they basically can just arrest you. That's what, like, that's what, that, that's what that means. That, that's what that means. They can arrest you. They hurt, uh, but they save. <laughs> they, can, they can just straight up arrest you. Like um, just- coordinate and facilitate transportation to the hospital. Uh, where needed, and handcuff you and put you in the back seat of a cruiser. So the second time I had an interaction with the police, yeah, you like that, eh? The second time I had an interaction with the police, um, it was 2010. This would have been my fourth episode. Uh, I was walking naked in the streets. Um, do you remember this? This is when I destroyed mom's car, which I probably shouldn't. Was this when was this? Two thousand and eleven. Two thousand eleven. Yeah. So I destroyed. I destroyed my mother's car. Um, like totaled it. I hope there's no statutes of limitation on vandalism because I've vandalized that car. Uh, sorry, mom. I owe you a car. Um, so and then I proceeded to take off all my clothes and start walking the streets naked. Uh, and then I walked into a young white couple's house and I, I feel the need to, to say that they're white because what transpired next was pretty horrific. Um, I tried to get in their oven. Don't know why. Uh, to see what's for dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I tried to get in their oven. I tried to like go on their Facebook page on their cell phones and like it was this. They didn't even have locks on their cell phones. They were such trusting people. And then they called the police on me and the police came, dragged me out of their house, threw me to the ground, kneed me in the back and handcuffed me, then threw me in a cruiser. Um, so what part? I was trespassing. I was, in fact, trespassing, but I wasn't violent. I was not, as they knew, I wasn't ca- went wielding a knife like the last time. Let me just uh, check my Facebook. <laughs> I, was, I was just rubbing someone's cell phone all over my naked body. Like, that's not a crime. That's not a crime, okay? That's not a crime, man. That's Anyone could do that without criminal recourse. So yeah, so they threw me down. They put me in the back. They put a they put a, like a police jacket over me because it's just covering my naked, my foul nakedness. And so they threw me in the back. The cruiser took me to the hospital. Took that was the second time. My second encounter. That one wasn't so great. The knee to the back. Ouch! It was unnecessary force, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you were naked. They didn't want to touch you. They just. <laughs> They didn't want to use their foot. Mm, that's <laughs> true. That's true. That's true. I could have been the other, the girl, Miss Wang. I could have been Miss Wang. Um, but the thing is, sorry, going back to the, the mobile uh, crisis intervention team that we were just talking about, you can't call them. So what's the point? So I, all those things that were mandated, um, all I got was 
you're arrested under the mental health act and we're taking you to the hospital. There was no like talking to me or trying to talk me down or, you know what I mean? There was no reasoning with me. They detained you basically. They detained detain someone that's in, intoxicated. Exactly. Like exactly. So they're like, we're taking you to the hospital. That's what we're doing. So, so, but you can't, you can't get a hold of these crisis in, or these uh, mobile crisis intervention teams like on your own like you can't just say I'm, I'm someone's in mental distress I'm going to call the mobile crisis intervention team that's a problem that's a problem we're not asking for well no we're asking for a number like 911 yeah like a specific number there's so many other numbers there's you know? so many that you could choose from 333 three, three. <laughs> yeah 333 three, three. that's yeah sounds- something something um and they're not also they're not the first responders um, the first responders are their priority response unit, and then they decide whether the situation is safe enough for the mobile crisis unit to come in. So they go, the, either they go or the police goes after the first no, the, the, responder goes. No, the priority response unit goes first, so regular schmegular police, mm-hmm. and then the mobile crisis unit is, is called, called in. Police. This is for Toronto. I think in Hamilton, I remember reading once that they... Are they're like they had like one of the most innovative programs when it came to crisis intervention teams, mm-hmm. where all their police that are that work with crisis intervention teams and outside of it are trained for forty hours instead of the twelve that is required for police um, to train in mental health uh, in Ontario. Mm-hmm. Twelve hours, people. Did 12 you hear what I hours? said? Wait, twelve I just, hours. A part of me thought you said twelve weeks. To be no, honest, 12, twelve hours. Hour. That's all you need. To become a police officer and that's all you're equipped with study of for law? mental health like do they not study law i'm not even sure if they study law it i know they certainly don't study mental health very gonna, much if you're gonna arrest people for breaking the law you should at least know the law not your little book of notes <laughs> that's true okay. i don't even know like your miranda rights are on a card <laughs> that you read yeah you don't but know. for cits um it's it's 40 hours of training so it's a little bit more hours, um, which is good, but... That's not enough. It's still not enough. They should be training from the first 40? year they're you in. St- how, much, how much you say? You said 40 hours? 40 hours is what you need for the crisis and intervention team. 40 hours is what you need to graduate high school to get your criteria done. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to put that out there. Let everybody else think about that for a second. Police have to do 40 hours of crisis intervention, and, and students have to do 40 hours of, of community service to graduate high school. Does that, does that sound realistic, that kids do the same type of hours for you guys to do the same type of hours to learn how to deal with the, the general public? No. <laughs> You're not children. You, you, you need to do three months. Hmm. Six months. Jeez. It's true. It's not enough. It's never enough. And one of the reasons it's not enough is because there's not enough funding for mental health programming in Please any paid enough that arena. They should just, you know? Oh, trust me. We're getting to the funding. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about the funding. Defund the, the, the police. Defund the police. Defund the police. You cuss. I did it. There we go. <laughs> Love you, mom. <laughs> Kiss up. Um, no, but the wellness check scandal. This has been happening. Some of the people I even said at the beginning of the, at the top of the hour, um, with the, some of the names I mentioned, Regis and, um, Ejaz and, you know, the people that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. But, um, five people have died during mental health, uh, calls or wellness checks by police since April. That's all five were black, indigenous, or people of color. So that's a, that's a two folder. Right. Do you want me to go there? Because I could go there. Right I now. want you to go there, girl. Go so on. So what happened to Karen? Hmm? <laughs> what happened to Karen? What happened to the Karens? Because so we're, so we're, we're, not, we're not calling them Bettys anymore or, or whatever. Oh, we're Becky? Calling them Becky? We're calling them Karens. What happened so to what, the Beckys? So what, happen, what happens to, to Karen when she gets picked they up? They get taken mental- to the hospital. Like, do you know how, on, honestly, do you have any idea how fortunate I am to be alive today? Like, mm-hmm. Based on some of the I bullshit do. that you know, the police pull, and being naked and going uh, to yeah, ovens, like, like this is a people, little concerning to me. Please like, don't do that again. Honestly, I will. Ne- I can't promise anything. Um, <laughs> I can't say never. Say never. You never know when you feel like being naked. Um, <laughs> okay, Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like I just I'm lucky. I'm lucky because um, 
this one girl Chantel moore 26 year old indigenous woman i can't remember what tribe she's from it had like a bunch of hyphens in it so i didn't write it down because i knew i would butcher it oh. um so it's just an indigenous woman um fatally shot by the edmonston police force on june 4th during a wellness check police said she threatened she threatened them with a knife no. see what i'm saying is there a pattern here people is there a trend like, sprinkles and crack on it is that what you know what on? you know what you know what because maybe i watch too much tv but i'm pretty sure now they have fabric that cannot be penetrated by a knife so maybe we just need to get these police fancier uniforms so they don't maybe. feel infuriated by a knife like they don't feel like oh they you have could a shoot knife. someone you in the you shoot can't them. shoot someone in the foot like if someone if i had a knife you know and someone saying? shot me in the sh- foot or shot me near my knife. foot i would drop the knife I would I drop com- the knife. My reflexes wouldn't allow me to hold on to a knife with the banging sound like that. So why do you have to aim the gun directly at the perpetrator? And it's not even a perpetrator. It is a victim. It is, uh, you know, it, it was a, 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 a member. Episode. Yeah, a member of society that asked you for help. And you go over there and you, and you shoot were scared. them. You were or scared or because you of felt- the stigma. You were fearful of people with mental health issues and illnesses. So because of the stigma, the fear, and the danger surrounding people with mental illnesses that uh, are manic or psychotic, you decide to get trigger happy. Like, and we're not saying your fear is illegitimate. Ir- oh, no. Say the word for me. What? Illegitimate? Illegitimate. Is that the right? Okay. Yeah. We're not saying your fear, you know, is, is not it's not called for, but this is where training comes into play. You need to know how to face your fears if you're going to be doing a job every day and dealing with people in society. Mm-hmm. That's all play, That's all we're saying? We're not? Oh, we're mm-hmm. saying more than that. Well, I'm not I done. mean, we are, but <laughs> I, I just, you know, sometimes you need to be butter. Accountable. You need be to accountable for your actions. People, you know, so people are going to, like, we don't want to get accountable right now. We don't want to be. We don't get mail. Send, me, like, my hate, send me some hate. I'd love to get some hate mail from some wanna, police officers right now. We don't want to hear anything like my dad's a police officer my and dad. he fears every time he, we listen. We, I'm little Johnny, listen, I don't care about that. I'm sorry, but uh, CBC, bigger issues at hand. CBC investigations, um, obviously very reputable. Mm. Um, of I the 461 of uh, uses of deadly force from 2001 to 2017, 70 percent of the victims. Stop suffered talking. from mental health and substance abuse problems. Stop it gets talking. better. It gets better. Seventy no. percent. It gets better. Uh, and the study also found that per capita, Indigenous and Black people are overwhelmingly overrepresented in police killings. Like. what the f like how do you need more proof do you need more receipts does anybody need anything else you want to go the to information is out there if you look for it yeah the information is right there in front of your face yeah. if you look for it for those who don't believe in um stigma or that you know that we embrace people with mental health in our community or we embrace black people or we embrace indigenous people like no the information is out there for you like that's why people are rioting in the streets. Like in Canada, I don't know anything. Like I know a little bit about the U.S., but most of them, it's a racial issue. When people are doing these wellness checks and they're getting killed over it, like now we have a twofold issue with the police, police brutality and, you know, police deadly use of force when it comes to mental health um, crisis, dealing and with mental health crisis. that don't look like them. Could we just... Yeah, people that don't look like them. It's tough. It's tough. Um, I don't know. They're blaming the the shrinking budgets, and they're saying, you know, that we're not getting the funding and mental health programming that we need in order for police officers to do their job they're not supposed to be at the front lines they're not supposed to be first responders but they are who you call so who, you know who does 911 bring to your house not ambulance fire or police who else is supposed to go for these things like according to a report from the Canadian Mental Health Association uh 7.3% of our health care budget was spent on mental health whereas there was 13% spent in the UK 
So we're not even spending enough like money on mental. That's the problem. That's the I think that's the biggest problem. Like I I'm not saying I don't blame the police for their actions. I absolutely blame the police for their actions. Independently and individually. Independently and individually, exactly. Um, but I feel like if there was more funding for mental health programs, some of these situations could be avoided. Could be avoided um, with the police because people would be getting the support and the help that they need. And that's where I think we're sorely lacking. It's not just a police issue, it's a societal issue. And um, apparently we're underfunded in mental health by like $1.5 billion. I think we get billions to begin with, but we're still underfunded by 1.5 billion. So, like so many other things that go into play with mental health as well. But like, like could you imagine people that have to deal with everyday life, and you want to get some mental health resources, and they're underfunded, so they end up having to deal with the the, the people that aren't underfunded. Yeah, here who we have a heavy supply of. Of course, like the police. <laughs> like, who who um, else did you think I was talking about? This <laughs> who else did you think I was talking about? This talking about? Yeah, I know, but that's what they're talking about: defunding the police. You see it in the protests. Apparently, in the, I've seen some videos where they have the sign "Defund the police." I'm like, what does that mean exactly? So it means that they want to take um, a lot of funding from the police budget towards community um, programming. Um, affordable housing and um what else so all your little police fun balls all your little galas social workers community groups like as i said so we'll be, um we'll be putting your funds elsewhere just your so. funds are going elsewhere just and so. uh apparently canada and the united states are it's gaining a lot of support for this defunding um the police uh for example in Minneapolis, 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 thank you, uh, where George Floyd was killed uh, by the police. Thank you. Uh, the city council voted to dismantle the police department. So they're ripping it apart brick by brick um, to build it back up to something a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit. Did you get shivers? A little bit. It feels like. It's not ju- no 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 no. It it's feels the, it's a little bit the, like it's just the cusp of justice. The cusp of justice, like the cusp. Um, apparently, two Toronto city councilors have proposed cutting Toronto's police budget by ten percent, which is approximately twenty million dollars a year. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So give us t- give us twenty percent. Hell, give us fifteen. I'm negotiating for us right now. What do you mean? That's how much ten percent is? I thought that was going to be. Wait a second. No, it's isn't it twenty million? I can't <gasps> read my writing. What does that say? Hold on, people. Let me not get too is excited. One hundred twenty million. <gasps> it's a hundred and twenty million. One hundred and twenty million oh, a year. My gosh, give us fifteen. Yeah, give housing is necessary uh, right now less, in this climate. Like, exactly. Like oh, the mental health. Is <laughs> so they're saying they're going to put it towards improving community support, such as skills training, child care, affordable housing, mm-hmm. and alternatives to policing. Give us um, 15. And John Tory, surprise, surprise, who's always on board for everything. <laughs> He's a yes man. Oh, um, we appreciate you, yes man. We appreciate, we appreciate you. when you say yes to things that we like. Um, yes. So he wants to look at alternative mod- models for community safety. Um, so like that neighborhood watch. Yeah, you know, like a neighborhood watch type of thing. Things without guns, like just take take away the guns. Yeah. There would be no gun violence without guns. That's like even the tasers. Uh, did you okay? <laughs> I know we finished news class, but I, I did hear there was a girl, I'm not too sure which place, but we're just going to say the U.S. So there was a girl in the U.S. who, um, she was pregnant, and the police tackled her to the ground. I don't know for what reasoning, I, I, like I can't imagine, but she was just er- early stages of pregnancy, pregnant nonetheless, and they tasered her belly after she said she was pregnant intentionally twice. So that officer got fired, of course, and is about to be dealing with some criminal charges, which, the, you know... It's about did time. the baby die? Yes. She did lose, <gasps> she did lose the baby. So. I'm so sorry for her. Yeah. 
So, but the, these are these are things like these are just the, it's just the start. It's just the start. You know, defunding, defunding. We're not defunding the police, or we don't want the police to be defunded just to not have police anymore. We want the police to be defunded so that we could build a better infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. Um, also implementing more crisis intervention teams um, across the country yes. would be a good idea and making them first responders um, to mental health crisis calls. Exactly. Um, because that's backwards that police go first and then they'll call. Then they're like, if you're if okay. Cause, and they're, they're using the excuse of, like, I think what they're concerned with is the safety of the non-police personnel that's with you. No, I think which they're is concerned the nurse. is their power. No, no, no. I mean, like, this is what they're saying. Like, mm-hmm. I think this is what they're, this is their justification. They're like, mm-hmm. okay, if someone's got a knife or someone's got a gun or someone's got whatever, you know, and um, you're, you're putting a nurse who's not a police officer at risk, because someone is, you know, going, you know, uh, is psychotic or mm-hmm. for whatever reason, and they're violently psychotic. What they don't, what they fail to realize is that nurse might have twenty years of experience versus their forty hours of experience mm-hmm. dealing with psychotic situ, so like people who together, are in psychosis. Yeah. So sending in a police officer first to de-escalate the situation, and which is one of the solutions, is de-escalation. But sending a, a, a police officer who has 12, potentially only 12 hours of experience de- de- to de-escalate a situation makes no sense over a nurse that would have 10 plus years of de-escalation experience. Mm-hmm. The, like, they're trained to be in these quote-unquote dangerous situations. I don't want to, I hate to use the word dangerous, but these volatile, let's say, mm-hmm. situations where people are not in their right minds, right? Right? Mm-hmm. They deal with it within hospitals and within their job, like without ho- outside of hospitals. Like that's what they're supposed to be and trained to do. So why don't you just let them do their jobs instead of putting them in the, the sideline until it, oh it's safe for you know it's safe for yeah. Nurse Betty to come out and talk to the because you know talk the, to the Looney Tune I'm, I'm you know gonna, like I'm not gonna disown my my comment because of the power the power that they have in the situation when they're the ones to go in and see what the situation is. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, they're gonna put it off to as it's the safety. We want to make sure these people are safe, but there's no reason you can't send out a police officer and a trained person. At exactly. The same time. Exactly. Know, when when there's okay, you, we see it in movies. I've never seen it happen in real life, but in movies, what happens when when there's someone holding hostages in in a, in a place? Do they not bring someone to talk the person down mm-hmm. as well as the police being there? Mm-hmm. Yes. So why can't you do the same when you're outside of someone's door? Why can't you have someone talking between a door and another person, not injuring someone, to talk them down off of whatever not situation? Not the ledge or whatever. Ledge. Yeah. Why can't you do that? Exactly. Why do you feel like you're not in power with that being done? Why do you feel like you're not in control of the situation with someone else taking control? They feel they need their guns. You don't. I know they don't. You don't. They don't know they don't. Um, revisit use of force policies and training. That would be a key one. Uh, because again, it's the stigma. It's the stigma of, you know, around mental health where we're dangerous, you know, volatile people who could strike at any moment, mm. you know. We could just leap at you and all of a sudden we'll have magical superpowers and we'll, in their we'll eyes. shoot like venom from our chests instead I of saw like nothing when I looked at Yeah, in my like, eyes. like we're all like Ted eyes. Bundy or, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the Ted Bundy episodes on Netflix. These guys are all just, <laughs> just so you know why I made a Ted Bundy.